Devin Bushwood, please. Welcome to Solid Rock tonight. Four lives are changed. If you're visiting with us tonight, we're glad to have you to be with us. Part of us here at Solid Rock. Good to be in the house of God tonight. Good to see each and every one of you. Now, when you come this way to worship the Lord in spirit and truth, amen. If you lost tonight and don't know Jesus, free pardon of sin, it's all to be open at any time that you might feel the need to pray. Well, the preacher be singing, singing. He likes sings a lot, you know, and then he preaches a lot, too. So either part of it will be all right as long as the Lord's speaking to you. So let just come together tonight in one accord. If we come together in one accord, we can see things happen. You can't do nothing but strive in the in, David had problems when the, when the gold and the silver and all was buried in the tent. Had sin in the camp. You can't have sin in the camp. You gotta have harmony. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. There is no God like unto our God.
Hallelujah. Did you come to exalt the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Let's give him a cheer. Let's exalt his name. Hallelujah. Let's all do it together. Hallelujah. As Brother Bronnie said, in one mind, one accord, let's worship Jesus tonight. One more time. A great big cheer for him. Hallelujah. Such a privilege to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Such a privilege, you know, to come and gather together in his name and know that he's in the midst. And, and you know what? If you need to be saved, tonight's your night. If you need something from the Lord, he can be touched. Hallelujah. You can be seated just for a moment. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight. Going to be blessed. Going to hear something from, straight from the throne room tonight. But right now, if the offering takers will come on to the front, we'll take up tonight's offering. Let's make Sister Sheila welcome as she comes to sing. Let's give her a hand tonight. Brother Chris Papa well stand and testify now, brother. I just like to praise the Lord tonight. He is awesome and he holds our hand every step of the way. If we just reach up to him, it's going to be worth the journey, y'all. Well, sometimes I get so weary, traveling this old road. And I cry, Jesus, come and help me to bear. What? 
the journey when I get to Sing it one more time. Heaven's going to be worth it. Heaven's going to be worth the journey when I get there. Lord, that city will be so wonderful, so bright and fair. When I see Jesus sitting on his throne, I'll be so glad for the journey when I get there. Hallelujah. Heaven's going to be worth the journey. Hallelujah. Let's give our King Jesus, Hallelujah. still on his throne, let's give him another hand tonight. Hallelujah. Help me make welcome our pastor, Brother Keith. Let's give him a hand. Well, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand tonight. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah tonight. Isn't God good? Turn around and shake somebody's hand and say, good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Come on, say, tell them, say, it's good to see you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to say it's good tonight to have Bonita Wilson tonight for her first time with us. Would you give her and the Lord a good hand tonight? Amen. God bless you for being with us tonight. Amen. I know that God's a mighty, mighty good God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time, turn around and tell somebody, so it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you're in church tonight? Aren't you glad that you're in the house of the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Good to have him if he hasn't. Amen. Now, be good to have you tonight. God bless you. Amen. Give him and the Lord a good hand tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Appreciate you being with us tonight. I know that God's a mighty good God in each and every one of you. How many can always see sometimes somebody else and know that they're in trouble and and you realize if God don't touch them that they're going to really get in bad shape? then you know what, when you see that, you better pray for them mightily because they need a mighty touch of God tonight. Amen. I want to say it's so good to see Sister Leah's tonight. Amen. Her been, <laughs> she's been out for a while. Let's just stand and give her a good hand tonight. God bless you. She has every reason not to be in the house of God, but she's got every reason to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. He's a mighty good God. Amen. Sing a chorus of this song with me tonight. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. In your life will never be the same. There is only one way that you Got to believe when you call on his name. Would you sing it with us one more time? Oh, touching Jesus is all that really matters. Keep that in mind tonight. And in your life will never be the same. to believe when you call on his name a woman she tries to leave position yet grew worse so to Jesus she came Oh, yes, it will. And with that crowd, oh, they tried, tried to restrain her. to restrain her. But you know what she does? She whispered these words. She oh. whispered these words through her pain. Take it, church. Come on now. Oh, touch it, Jesus is all. Always open. Hallelujah. 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 Halleluj
Hallelujah, by the power of God. Sing it with the church. There is only one way that you can touch Him. You've got to believe when you call on His name. Without music, would you lift your voices? Touching Jesus. There's only one way that you can touch him. You've got to believe when you call on his name. Amen. Remain standing with me tonight, if you would, reading of the word of the Lord tonight. And it's good to see Daddy Joe with us tonight. Hallelujah. I don't know when he come in, but good to see you, buddy. Hallelujah. God bless you. I want to share a couple things with you, and I really need you to listen to me for just a few moments tonight, and I ask you not to be going in unless you really have to. Amen. Most of us has done been at the bathroom three or four times, but has to get going. Amen. Now, if you've got problems, amen, I don't, I don't, amen, I'm talking about just running in and out. Amen. So you have to really divide with me on that. But I had a message I've been studying on, seeking the Lord, that the Lord had given me, and I thought I was going to maybe preach it tonight. This evening, about 3 o'clock, I guess it was, I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me and, and change the whole direction of my message. I don't usually do this. Most time, amen, but amen. And tonight, there's a miracle in this house. I can stand on what God tells me. And I know that God's bigger than any situation that we're in. And now let me tell you something. When God speaks something, I won't run from it. Because I know it's right. Don't care what the circumstances look like. I preached this morning. No matter what comes or goes, I know what God says. I know that God's a mighty God tonight. And tonight I believe that God is able to touch people's lives. And you may raise your hand if your life needs to be touched tonight. Amen. If you allow God, God will touch you in every what need that you need. It could be a physical, emotional healing. It could be something that, amen, that you cannot shake. Amen. It's something that, amen, that you deal with every day of your life. But God's able to do things in that situation that causes things to happen for you. Amen. So I ask you to give much heed tonight to the word of the Lord. Amen. It's a simple message, but it's powerful because God's word is always powerful. But God's a mighty good God tonight. Amen. Would you one more time say amen. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. And then your life will never be the same. There is only one way that you can touch Him. To believe when you call on his name. As I said a moment ago, would you play real softly? I know what the Lord spoke to me today. I know that that God wants to touch somebody in here tonight. And you know, I, I want to be touched by the Lord tonight. You know, and to a point, I don't be selfish or, or sound like it's all about me, but I believe every time I come to the house of God, I need a touch of God. So we're living in a very, very serious time. And that our hearts need to be touched in a way. We might not need something physically or ever what, but my heart needs to be touched that it stays tender before God. I was bound when I knelt at that old altar and I cried Jesus Lord heal my every need and when this prisoner oh he finally 
me touch Jesus. Sing it now. He set me free. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo. Sing it. Come on, church. His own. Oh, yes, then your life will never be the same. There is only one way that you can touch it. You've got to believe when you call on His name. How many believes that tonight? Amen. Amen. Would you just slip your hands up towards heaven tonight and just thank Him tonight that you're going to be touched by the hand of God and God's going to minister to you tonight. And maybe you're standing in the gap for somebody else tonight. I don't know. Somebody that needs a breakthrough. Somebody that maybe the devil's lying to. They're being deceived. They're making excuses and they feel like their excuses are legitimate. And but tonight, God just wants to touch our hearts. God wants to minister tonight by his mighty hand. For the next 30 seconds, I want you to just ask God to help you to prepare your heart. Tonight, that you can get a hold of this message. And this message will cause some things to happen in your life. In the name of Jesus. Of course, he's a mighty good God tonight. So good to see Brother Jeremy and Mindy and Ellie tonight. Good to see Ellie and all the kids. Amen. I want to say God's a mighty good God. Would you raise your hands up one more time towards heaven and say, God, touch somebody tonight. God, just minister to somebody tonight that's it's got to have a miracle. Touching Jesus is all that matters. And then your life will never, never be same. There is only one way that you can touch it. You've got to believe when you call on His name. The book of Mark chapter number four tonight with your Bibles. Amen. Thank you, musicians. God bless your hearts tonight. Amen. You make it so much easier on us. Thank you. Amen. God's a mighty good God. The book of Mark chapter number four. Amen. God's blessed me, amen, so much. Appreciate my daughters. They've always been with me, been faithful, been through the thick and the thin. And I appreciate that tonight with my daughters. Give them a good hand tonight, amen. <laughs> Sister Jean taught them right. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. Appreciate my wife tonight, amen. God's a mighty good God. Appreciate all he's doing for us. And I got some good news for us tonight. Turn and tell your neighbor, I got some good news for you. Amen. Ain't this a one? Turn around, look at your neighbor and say, Well, that's a wonderful crowd Sunday night. Amen. Good crowd. Amen. Hallelujah. Now just start praying, God, fill them other seats. Fill them seats. God, fill them. Amen. Now, go out there and get them. Amen. Book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 35. The same day when the evening was come, it was getting dark. He said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when he had sent away the multitude, Jesus had taught them all day long. They were tired. They were in a place that they needed just to get away. The Bible said when they would send the multitude away, they took him, Jesus, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. 
There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so it was now full of water. It, the word water is not there, but that's what it means. And Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awakened him and said unto him, Master. Now they didn't wake him up and just say, Master. They were out of their wits. Master, Master, don't you care that we perish? Somebody say amen. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. My God. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? I've been on the sea. I've been on the ocean. I've been in places. And for it to calm that would be the most amazing thing you could imagine. For everything just to die and to be totally calm. Really, it's an impossibility because it's always going to be that way. But when the Lord says something, things change. Let me believe that tonight. Brother Calvin, would you say the prayer of the reading of the word? Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Father. Give the Lord a shout of praise. I wish some, you know, sometimes you all should always have try to be able to be in church. But there are times when Satan fights you extremely hard to keep you out of church. And it's for a specific reason because there's a visitation for you there that night that nobody else will maybe get. Nobody else even know about it except you. But I want to go back to verse 35 tonight and as we go into this scripture, and you, you've heard this scripture many times if, if you've been in church very long, and amen, and, and, and the Lord was, as, as I said, you know, amen, the, uh, the, it was a, a hard day, and amen, they were tired, and amen, and, and they sent the multitude away. Jesus had preached all the day, and amen, in his physical body, in that natural body, he may, I'm sure he did, because he healed the sick, he had cast out devils, he had done things, his body was exhausted, and he said, let us go. Everybody shout, let us go. Over to the other side. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but, amen, there's hope in that scripture. There's victory in that scripture. There's a promise in that scripture. There's an anchoring in that scripture. Can I get a witness in here? Let me go over this again. There's a promise in this scripture in verse 35. Amen. There's strength in this scripture. There is an anchor in this scripture. Let us, not by yourself, but let us. Now, anytime the Lord goes with you, you're going to be all right. How many believe that? I don't care what comes or goes, you're going to be all right. The Lord said, let us. Not y'all go over, you go over, and for the, for the old folk, you ones go over. Somebody shout amen. I don't know who the you ones are. I got three people. Thank y'all. Amen. So he said, but let us go over to the other side. Now, there's a promise in that. There's encouragement in that. I want to I want to strengthen this and drive it home. And there's an anchor in that tonight. Can I get a witness in the house? Now, when I look at this scripture, 
Amen. God did, amen. The Lord Jesus didn't say, maybe we'll go over. He said it was an absolute, we're going over. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. Re read the next verse again with me because I want to just share this with you tonight. How many of those God's a good God? Somebody shout, he's a good God tonight. Amen. And when I look at these scriptures tonight, and amen, the Bible says when he was sent the multitude away, they took him as he was in the ship. Amen, a little ship with them. Amen. And look at this scripture. Next verse, please. Amen. And when he rose, then there rose a great storm of wind. And I want to preach a few minutes. Now, they were on the Sea of Galilee. Amen. But tell your neighbor, we're going to the other side. Tell your neighbor, we're going to the other side. When God spoke to me about healing today, I heard the voice, that tender voice of God said, preach on healing tonight. I believe that there are miracles not only physically, uh, not only financially, uh, I believe mentally uh, and ever as emotionally uh, in our lives tonight, God is going to do something for me tonight by the grace of God. How many wants to receive that tonight? Now, when I looked at these scriptures and God began to deal with me, and I said, Lord, do I give healing scriptures? Amen. And I've got some scriptures on healing and different things. Uh, but God gave me this scripture uh, to tell you tonight uh, we're going uh, to the other side. But now going to the other side, there is a journey. And we're on a journey tonight. Amen. And in this process, from amen, uh, from one shore to the other, amen, is some situations called life. And life sometimes has some big surprises that we and I don't like. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. Now, when you look at these scriptures tonight, uh, amen, when God said, uh, let us go to the other side, uh, sometimes, uh, whoo, the comforting words of God get confusing in our lives. Well, not one amen, a couple of go heads. Because God said, let's go to the other side. But before we got to the other side, I got a storm on the road. The winds got to blowing. This wasn't an ordinary storm. It was a demonic windstorm of the devil. It wasn't anything like the disciples had ever seen. They couldn't control it. They didn't know what to do. They knew they was going to drown in the middle of that sea. And they said that sea somewhere about where they was at was about 500 feet deep. Now anything after eight feet, I'm a goner. Six feet, I'm a goner. Somebody shout Amen. Especially in winds that they said somewhere was probably somewhere at 100 miles an hour or above. Now, I don't know about you. I can't set up in my yard at 100 mile an hour wind. Let alone a little boat out on the sea and 500 feet of water. Now, the Lord says this. Let us go to the other side. But when the disciples got in the middle, they said, we got here and we're going to die. Come on now. So it seemed like the Lord's words were confusion because of the situation they were in. But God's word is absolute. It don't change. It don't vary. Y'all not get it. You won't get your milk until you get the word. Because the word what heals you. The word is what delivers you. The word is what keeps you. I can shout all day long. I can, amen. One guy said, boy, y'all having a good, a big old hoot nanny, ain't you? I said, no, that's just people praising the Lord for his goodness. But when I can't shout, I can hold to his word. When I can't do anything else, I can hold to what God said. God's word is an anchor to me uh, in the midst of the storm. Anybody hear what I'm telling you right now? Amen. The sun was shining. It was evening. It was a good evening. And they got in the midst of that sea. And all of a sudden, there rose a great storm of wind. And brother, the boat was about to sink because of the water that the wind was blowing in. But there was still a word. And that word anchored me. Amen. You're going to the other side. Folks, you got to get anchored in God's word. 
Let me tell you something. This, this is not just an ordinary book. It's a book of life. Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they're spirit and they're life. Amen. Nothing too hard for God, Sister Liz. Nothing too hard for God. I look at you and I see difficulties. I see the wind blowing. Sister Rachel, the wind blowing in your life. I guarantee you both got some water in it right now. Sister Judy, Brother Wayne, hello. Some of us got water in our boat. But we got a word to start with that anchored us. We're going to the other side. I want somebody to hear me tonight. I'm going to the other side. Woo! But there's a journey between here and the other side. But I got a problem, amen, when the children were all going to fly when we was in Christian school and all the children were going to fly out to um, uh, Arizona, amen. And we're talking about they, they were Jason, Robin, Jeannie, Daniel, uh, Jennifer, uh, I don't know who all it was, and PJ, I think, and uh, amen, and all these, and Brother Tom, Sister Jean, and amen. And they'd never flown, and I'd never turned them loose either. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. And I said, God, I don't, I don't know if they get on that plane or not. I don't know if they need to be on that plane. You know, and all this and amen and hallelujah. And I was praying. I said, God, is, is it okay? I want a word from you that I don't have to be frantic. You, Brother Wayne. Oh, they'll mess with all of us in that wind going. I'm preaching good to y'all. And God gave me a scripture. Out of Genesis chapter 22. And I heard these words. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and come again. I said, Brother Tom, go. I ain't worrying about you. The plane can't fall because God done said it. Somebody shout hallelujah. You say, well, that wasn't nothing. It was to me. I got an anchor. I got a word that steadfast me. I got a word that was unmovable. Because if God says something, I, I don't care what comes or goes, uh, that plane could have, uh, listen to me, that plane uh, could have lost all their engines uh, and had to land, uh, in a, amen, in a way uh, that was dangerous. Uh, but God told me uh, that them children uh, and them was going to come back. Uh, amen. And brother, uh, I can't help what went uh, or what could have happened. Uh, they was going to come back because God said it. Now, when you get the word of the Lord, uh, amen, brother, uh, you may look like you're going to die. The doctors may pronounce you dead, uh, but you'll push the cover off uh, and say, wait a minute. Uh, God said something different uh, than anybody else said. And that's happened. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout, we're going to the other side. Amen. Say, we are going to the other side. Say it like this, the Lord and I are going to the other side. Now this storm came up. Man, I'm so stressed out. I'm just, I'm just so stressed out. That's a storm of wind. Man, I'll tell you what. Jeremy asked me, I talked to him this evening. He asked me, did I come to church tonight? I said, Jeremy, I ain't sure. I said, I'm dealing with that toenail of mine. I said, that toenail's giving me a lot of problems. I asked about as good as anybody else. Says, loose lippity excuse. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I'm not talking about something being wrong. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about just excuses. Amen. I get so tired at church, I set up to 3 o'clock in the morning watching John Wayne. <laughs> well, glory. Let me tell you something. But he said, let's go to the other side. Amen. That devil wanted to try the word of God. But the Bible says the word of God's been tested. And it's been tried. And it's pure. And it's righteous. And that word cannot fail you tonight. Heaven can pass away. This earth can pass away. But not one dot, not the one cross of a T will ever fail in the word of the living God tonight. I don't know about y'all, but there's a victory, amen, that we ought to shout from, amen, because we are going to the other side. Tell your neighbor, I may have battled demons, I battled stress, I battled drugs, I battled alcohol, I battled every devil in hell, but I am going to the other side.
God because God said, let us go to the other side. Somebody ought to give God a little shout of praise in here. You say, preacher, I'm fearful. Well, you, you're in the boat then. I'm fearful. I'm just frustrated. I've, I have dealt with this sickness till I'm tired of being sick. You ever get tired of, you ever get sick and tired of being sick and tired? And sometimes there's an illness that you cannot in your own abilities get over. There's injuries in our lives. Sometimes it very difficult to get over because our spirit's been wounded. There's mourning. There's the loss of something. Or a loved one. Sometimes you just feel like you're stuck and there's no way out. You're rowing. You're, you're, foot, you're doing everything you can to try to, to keep stable. And the boat's getting more full of water. And Jesus is asleep. (laughs) Hello? Now, his body was asleep. But his spirit wasn't. Why was the disciples pulling their hair out and Jesus was asleep? Why was Jesus calm as he could be, peaceful and restful, and 12 guys on that boat on each other's toes are hollering, we ain't going to make it. I preached y'all night. And the Lord right in the boat, we ain't going to make it. We're in the middle of the sea and we're going to drown. We're going under. But let us go to the other side. Amen, I know that's a simple thing, but God told me to tell you tonight, I don't care what you're battling, uh, you're battling tonight, but you are going to the other side. And some of you will walk out of here tonight and you'll be healed uh, by the grace uh, and the mercies of an almighty God. Amen, both physically, uh, amen, in every aspect of our lives, uh, you that's watching by internet, uh, the power of the Holy Ghost uh, will touch your life tonight by the power of God. Go to Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. This is in your Bible. And you ought to to learn that verse. We know who the world turns. We know who John, Sue, Ramonia, Leonard is. We can tell you everything about their life for the last five years. Uh, Kelly, go ahead. One of them soaps. I don't know why they call it. I don't, I, I, I'm not going to get in that. But I don't know why the soap opera, I mean, I don't know why they call it soap. I, don't, I ain't sure. There ain't nothing clean on it. Well, go away. But anyhow, I thought that was the most stupidest thing I ever seen in my life in soap operas. When Sister Jean and I first got married, she watched them. And I'd come home for dinner. And Erica was on. That was her name, wasn't it? I don't was. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on. Oh, oh, look at you sinful lost people. <laughs> Todd, I need to preach. I had an hour for dinner, Sister Minnie. She began to tell me about them. And I sat down there and I got to watch it. Man, I hated when I had to leave. Boy, of all things get addictive to us, don't it? I want to get myself addicted to the word of God that I know God's word enough uh, that I can stand the face of adversity uh, and the devil uh, and tell the devil God uh, is still able. Uh, he ain't lost nothing. Uh, he's more than able uh, to do exceedingly uh, and abundantly uh, and above all uh, that we ask or think uh, according uh, to the power that worketh in us today. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Give God another shout of praise in this place tonight. Tell your neighbor, look at him and say, we're going to the other side. Tell him again, we're going to the other side. Hey Amen. But all this stress, all this time of difficulties, God give me a word. It stabilized me. It anchored me. It was an absolute. It wasn't a maybe. It was an absolute. Tell your neighbor, say, it's not a maybe. We're going over. Woo, come on, somebody. But all of a sudden, them disciples were starting to act and start to live like he said, let's go out in the middle and get a man and drown. God didn't say go out in the middle and you're going to drown just because there's a storm. He said, you go in to the, oh, we still can hear me tonight. What is that other side? There's healing in the other side. There's victory past your illness and your sickness and your infirmity and your inabilities on the other side. There's a move of the Holy Ghost that'll, that'll do exceedingly and abundantly and above tonight. Woo! Come here, brothers. Let me use let me use let me use him because he needs it. He, he. Remember that. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Now, when I used to, in my younger years, when I used to wrestle and fight and scuffle and carry on, everybody was always bigger than I was. And I found out one good thing. <laughs> Submit to me, buddy, okay? If I, raise it. <laughs> You sure ain't got no neck. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When that vice got to you and that's 250 pounds right there, you could pick me up, you could throw me, but guess who's going with me? Is that right, Brother Jason? Ain't going to get out of that, are you? When I put that ringer on you, you was the... <laughs> Help me, Lord. I'm being fought temptation you can't believe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, son. Yeah, you sure would. Boy, you have, you have great dreams, don't you? But anyhow, let's preach on. Sister Shelley was back there praying, God, God, don't let him hurt my little hubby. But anyhow. You gotta get to, you gotta get that word in a headlock. And you gotta hold to that word. You gotta stand on that word. There's gonna be winds that's gonna blow. There's big water that's gonna try to wash you away. But you get anchored in that word and say, devil, I'll tell you three times a day, ten times a day, fifty times a day. If I've got to stand for an hour, if I've got to take off an hour from work and just quote the word, quote the word, quote the word, quote the word, and it ain't just for the devil, it's for me. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God tonight. Give God a shout of praise. How many of y'all wanna go to the other side? How many of y'all want to go to the other side? It's more important, folks, than your phones, your texting. Amen. What somebody tells you, what somebody will call you, and somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, God. Now, in this, that God began to deal with me. He said, let's go to the other side. And all of a sudden, you, you've heard these messages. My God. You think that you're not going to make it. You're uncertain of the outcomes. But wait a minute. Go to Luke 5, 17. Jesus was preaching. And the Bible said they came out from every city. They came out. Some of them come as far as 80 miles to find something wrong with Jesus. I wonder if you'd walk 80 miles to find something good about Jesus. When you've got people with such a desire, amen, to throw down the word of God and to find fault with the word of God, they'll go to the extremes. 
and we won't even open our Bibles and read them when we're sinking. Came to pass on a certain day that he was teaching, and that was the Pharisees and the doctors of the law sitting, by which come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. But the power of the Lord. See, you cannot, you, anytime the presence of God comes into a place, it's not, listen, now, now I, want to I want you to understand this, and I love it. It's not to get excited. It's not, it's not and I'm a runner, I'm a shouter, I'm a praiser, I'm a hollering. Y'all know that. I mean, y'all know that. Y'all got a hooping, hollering preacher. If you don't know that, you've been asleep a long time. Your name must be Rip. <laughs> Amen. But when the presence of God comes in a place, and when God spoke this to me today, I begin to seek the Lord like this. God, help me not to go off in a wrong direction. Help me not to know in what I think about it. What are you saying to me? When the power of God comes into a place like it has right here. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is. Amen. And the Bible said the power of the Lord. The power of the Lord. Not just the Lord was there, but the power, the presence, the, 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 the glory of God. The, the, the radiance of the heat. You can't get in the presence of God without a change in your life. Ask Moses when he, 40 days on the mount, his face shined, his skin shined. He was a changed man. He was never the same after that. Amen. He wasn't the same after, amen, he seen the burning bush. Right. Amen, I've not been the same. When I get in the presence of God and God gives me visitation, it changes me. It changes my ministry. It changes the way I preach at times. Amen. If you can recognize that, you're a very spiritual person. And the presence of the Lord. Now, I hear people say, don't take this personally. Why, they're just old. That's just the way they got to be the rest of their life. Who said that? Amen. You find me that in that Bible and I'll eat that chair. I'll eat two of them. Now, she may die before night and I may die with you. I don't know. But that don't mean that you have to die full of sickness. You don't have to go down in the feet because we can go to the other side. You can still walk. Yes. Sister Judy. Sometimes we just got to get up. Tell you. I'm going to shout amen. amen. When I ruptured my disc in my back, God, I thought I was going to die. Daniel took me to the hospital at Somerset. I don't, know, I don't knock a doctor. Don't knock medication. Don't knock surgery. I don't knock any of this. But that doctor, he didn't know who I was. And Daniel tried to tell him that I don't do medicine well. I don't do, sure don't do uh, uh, morphine. Because I won't say old McDonald had farms when I hear. <laughs> don't a genie. Whole little genie's up at the hospital with me, and they give me that morphine. And I said, Genie, let's sing a song. She thought I was going to sing Amazing Grace, How Great Thou Art, Send Down the Rain, Lord, or something. And I said, Genie, let's sing it. I said, Old MacDonald had a farm. <laughs> Is that the truth? Huh? All I know is old McDonald had a farm. That's all I know. <laughs> but I came back to church on that Sunday night or the next Sunday. I couldn't be here that Sunday. Came back the next Sunday. And I was still in bad shape. Standing right there. The anointing of God came on me. And God healed my body. God healed my back. God healed my back. Took it away just like that right there. Now, sometimes it works that way. Sometimes it works in different ways. But we go into the other side. And the power of the Lord, that anointing was present to heal. And this word healing, Daniel, go to 1 Thessalonians, I believe it is. I didn't give you the scripture. But let me give it to you. 
First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First 5, 23. Everybody shout healing. healing. Shout it again, healing. healing. Say it again. Healing. Go to 2 Thessalonians. Or wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Stay where you at. Stay where you at. First Thessalonians 5, 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. He is praying a healing into their lives right here. Spiritually, emotionally, physically, and every aspect, God wants you whole. Now, I, sometimes I get concerned. Sometimes I, amen, I, I, get, I, I feel pressures and I feel anxiety and I feel the pressures of this world pushing in. And I have to take my shield of faith and push back against those fiery darts and say what God says and believe what God says. Brother, I take you on your word enough, Brother Calvin, if you call me and say, Brother Wayne, this is Kelvin. The Lord just told me to tell you to come to my house. I'm going to give you $10,000. I'll say I'll be there in 10 minutes. I don't care if i got to pay a fine, a, a speeding ticket. I'm going to his house. If Brother Jim called me and said, I'm going to, and he's a, he lives in the boonies or somewhere over there. He lives in three counties away, my dear. He says, Brother Wayne, the Lord spoke to me. I've got $20,000 i am going to give you. Brother Jim, I don't know where you at, but son, me and Google going to find you. Don't go to bed because I'm coming and I'll be there. I'll be there before dark. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know what I'm doing? I'm taking these guys on their word. And it doesn't matter. I have to pull over and say, sir, I say, Mr. Mr. Trooper, Mr. Mr. Officer, if you'll just follow me, there's about $2,000 involved in history for you. Lead the way, son. <laughs> now I'm going to jail for bribing the officer. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> shout hallelujah. <laughs> that ain't going to work, is it? Huh? <laughs> He's dead, sheriff. Somebody shout amen. <laughs> then I got to call Brother Chris. He'll get me out, won't you? Help me, Brother Chris. <laughs> he will. I got confidence in you. Why is it hard to believe God's word? Raise your hand and say, God, heal my body. Heal my shoulder. Heal my feet. Heal my mind. Heal me, God, from this tormenting spirit. Heal me, God, from my past. If my past is trying to drag me back down, it'll tell me that I'll never be what I need to be. Heal me right now. God's a healing in here right now. Raise your hands and love him. Come on, raise your hands and love him. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Let's go to the other side. Stand up, sis. Come here. Come here, yeah. Amen. Come to the music and play softly. Amen. Raise your hands and love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know one thing. Amen. The devil's got to go. In the name of Jesus. I want to lay hands on you. I want to believe God. Somebody get me the oil. Get me the oil right quick there, Brother Kevin. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open it there for me, buddy, if you don't care. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I ain't done preaching. We're just going to pray here. Amen. Just, oh, here we go. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That past, uh, amen, is like an anchor trying to drag you down. Uh, but you're going to get an anchor in the spirit. Look at me. You're going to get an anchor. Amen. 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 Amen.
your help. I'm going to the other side. I'm not going to tell you there ain't going to be storms along the way, but you will be able to get to the other side in the name of the Lord God. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. I command that power of hell. I command that torment spirit to loosen her. Receive that, sis. Receive that. Receive that right now. In the name of Jesus. Raise your hands and love him all over this tabernacle. Come on, raise your hands and love him. Say it with me. I'm, we are going to the other side. Amen. I mean, we're watering the boat. Maybe a lot of things. But we going to the other side. Because God gave you strength tonight. And he anchored you that you can get to the other side. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a shout of praise right now. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Come on. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Father, touch these young, this young man, this young lady, Lord, that's God, the wind got them caught up too. God got them in a place, God, that they're so uncertain about things. But Father, I ask you to touch them tonight. See, see, I feel the hand of God upon you. I feel the hand of God. You need the Lord tonight. When you say, Lord, you'd like to pray right now and ask God to save you. Hallelujah. Would you? Hallelujah. She wants to pray right there. Amen. And ask God to save her right now. Come on, raise your hands and love the Lord. Hallelujah. This is God having his way in this place right now. This young lady leads the Lord. Father, by the power of God, Father, by the anointing of God, command the powers of torment, God, the powers of hurt, God, the powers of the past to loosen her. Woo! Because we're going to the other side. God is Paul. Whoa! Oh, God. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and love him. There is only one way to can touch him. You've got to believe when you call on. Would you stand with me all over this congregation right now? Come on, love him. Come on, love him right now. Touching Jesus, all that matters right now. Father, by the power of God. Whoa. Pray for these young folks, children. Hallelujah. Pray for them. Father, by the power of God, touch this young man. Oh, you felt God talking to you. He wants to touch you. He wants to minister to you. Come on. Touching Jesus. Father, right now, right now, God, by the power of God, we'll never be the same. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. She said the Lord forgave her. Hallelujah. She has to know that. Come on, sing the song with us. Is all that really matters. Oh, yes, it is. And then your life will never be the same. There is only one way. You've got to be when you call Real softly, real softly. I want you to raise your hands tonight. Daniel put up Psalms 23, verse number four. 
Mary. I'll pray with you, Mary. It's all right. David said this, though I walk through the valley. Raise your hand and say, I'm walking through a valley, baby. There's a shadow of death in this valley. Death lingers over this valley. God, touch little Richard. Touch every need that he has in his life. God, every need that he's standing for tonight. Father, by the power of God, in the name of Jesus, minister that need right now, Lord. Minister to it in Jesus' name. Just raise your hands up one more time. Just keep our minds on the Lord. There are some people here that listen to me. Please, please hear me. Listen to me. You in this valley, and there's the shadow of death in this valley. And David said, I know what it is to walk through that valley. Death stands, and it casts a shadow. And it lets you know that his presence is there and it's wanting to take you. It's wanting you to die in this valley. Now there's people that's watching me tonight that you have died in your valley. Because all you can see was that shadow of death. Oh, you're still breathing. But you're not progressing. David said, I walk through it. See, some people have died in the valley. David said, I walk through it. Y'all still with me here? David said, I walk through it. It's not an easy place to walk through. It's difficult to walk through that valley. I've been through that valley. And it wants you to accept the circumstances as being final. But David said, though I walk through it, I'm not going to fear that evil. Why was he not going to fear the evil? Because he, you're with me. Let us go to the other side. Somebody raise your hand and say, we're going to the other side. <laughs> Oh, somebody raise your hand. I feel a healing in here right now. God spoke to me, said, preach on the healing. And there is a healing deliverance right now. Raise your hands and say, yes, God. Come on, raise your hands and say, yes, God. I want you to read, read that verse with me one more time. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will not. That's a positive. You know what? David had an anchor. That he was going to come out of that valley. His anchor was, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they console me. They comfort me. They give me the strength that I have need of to walk completely through that valley. Raise your hands right now. Sis, you can make it and you will make it. That's a promise from God. Now, I know we all have a choice to what we do, but you can make it tonight. Daniel put up verse 39 of Mark 4. As I close with this tonight, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. God, there was anointing in here when God spoke to me this evening. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, speak, preach on healing. I had another way to go. I, I had another message been prepared, and I had prepared and sought the Lord. And Amen. And that's just what I thought I was going to preach on. God spoke to me this evening. Sister Rachel, your valley is about over. You can come to the other side. Say, I'd be afraid to say something like that. Well, that's what God said. I'm just saying what God said. And when the Lord, they woke the Lord up out of that sleep, He arose. I love that word, rose. <laughs> That means he became master of all the circumstances and the situations. When the Lord arises in your situation, 
Everything in your life becomes submissive to God. Did you ever know that it's going to be all right? Not maybe, not guess so, not hope so, but will be. Sister Judy, we didn't pray for a maybe, hope so. We believe God that would. Brother Ronnie, you, you, you ain't a hope so or a maybe so. You are a so-so. <laughs> You're sure tonight. Listen to me. There's some people in here tonight. As I close. The Bible said he arose. Everybody shout, say he arose. And he said to the sea. How many of you would love to? Let me tell you something. Real softly, real softly. I'm going to say this. There's people tonight, they cannot live without turmoil in their lives. They wouldn't know what it, they, it would might near drive them insane to sit down and be calm for five minutes without something going on because they haven't had it in so long a time. They don't know how to deal with peace. Well, that went over real good. Always something. Whew, waters are hitting the boat. He ain't never good enough. You can't make him be enough. I'm sorry. Leave him alone. He said unto the wind, Peace. Peace. Hold it just a minute. Peace. Peace. Be still. I've been times in my life the storm was on so bad. I thought I'd lose my mind. I'd walk in church. And I'd sit down on the bench. I was in a meeting in Alabama. You be seated for a moment, please. I've got two more minutes before I close. I was in Lynn, Alabama. And man, I was in the storm of my life. Brother Ronnie, I was fearing things that I didn't, I didn't know why. I was, I, it wasn't under fear. Been a torment. Hate to see the sun go down. Struggling just to keep my composure. I want to just get out and run. Anybody ever been there besides me? Just take off and just go. I was in Lynn, Alabama. Never forget that night. He, he, he died a little while back. He was Brother Jack Cole's organ player, and I, I never met him at this time, Brother Jerry. And I opened the door of that car. I said, Gene, I don't know who's on that organ, did I not? But I said, he's an old timer on that organ. I said, his music, the style of it is all different than anything that I've heard played in a long time. And that music was playing. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Come for a cleansing. That organ was just talking to Calvary's flow. There's one, dear full power. And it was coming out of that, on that ground. And I felt the peace of God. Settle upon me. And I knew that the presence of God was in that house. When your storm is on, get in the house of God. If you've got to drag your carcass, if you're able, drag it. But get to the house of God. Because there's healing in the presence of God. Please hear me. He said, peace. Peace. Be still. 
been hurting, ain't you? Just uncertain. But you know what? I feel a peace. And in that peace, there's a great calm in the name of the Lord. There's a great calm. And in that calm, God's going to give you direction. Look at me, Matt. Because you're going to the other side. I want you to understand something. It's been a long time you've been to the other side. It's been a long time. But tonight, the storm is ceasing. Oh, I don't mean you ain't going to have situations, decisions, and all this. But there's going to be a surety and an absolute that you're going to the other side by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by the power of God. There it is. In the name of Jesus. Somebody raise your hands and praise him. Somebody raise your hands and praise him right now. Hallelujah. And I got in there and I said, Brother Jerry McKinley, I didn't know him, but I went up to him and I said, I don't know who you are, but I said, I want to know you. He said, <laughs> he talked to me a minute and he said, I was Brother Jack Cole's organ player. He said, I've seen things that would confound this, the natural mind. It's just unbelievable. I've seen the impossible come possible. He said, I've seen God move that he just like he brought it out of thin air and brought it right into existence. That's what God's still able to do. But our minds has got to be able to wrap around this and get a hold of this. And I believe in the next season that we're in, right, started in too, that we're going to see God move in such a way that he's just like he's going to come out of thin air and produce the miracles of God like we've never seen. And I believe that you're going to the other side, every bit of this, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of God, I believe. I believe right now, God, God, from this night forth, that not, God, those tumors and everything else is going to leave her body. In the name of Jesus, I said, lay hands on the sick, God, and they shall recover. God, and I believe your promise right now. God, I believe your promise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Raise your hands and love him. Raise your hands and praise him. Please, you play real softly again for me. Hallelujah, real softly. Stay with me just for a moment. I'm about done. Is that the, is that the foot? Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, let there be some feeling come into that foot. God, let her be able to put that foot on the ground and let it receive the strength that it needs, God. I know we've all been to the doctors and thank you for them and thank you, Father, for what they can do. But God, when they've done all they can, only you know what to do after that. And God, let that anointing touch Sister Judy's foot. In the name of Jesus, let there be feeling, God. In the name of Jesus, call it the swelling, anything that's in that foot. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Acts, Paul was preaching to a, a very group, rich group of people at this time. They were dressed in very fine apparel. They had the head, those words for handkerchief was a head garment. And those aprons were like a shawl type thing. And most of them were very expensive. As he was preaching to his congregation, Many of them knew that they had sick people and they were so bad off that they could not get to church. Paul took his handkerchief or his head covering in that eastern country, they still do it today, and tore it into pieces. And from his body, 
those aprons and handkerchiefs went out. And then when they took them home to the people, instantly they were healed. Devils were set, they were set free of devils. And the power of God caused great miracles, special miracles, the Bible calls them, to happen. Won't you raise your hand one more time and say, God, I thank you. We're going to the other side tonight. Say it again. God, I thank you. We're going to the other side. Say it with me. We're going to the other side. And I believe from this night forth, the rest of the journey, we're going to the other side. God, for Sister Leah's, I don't look at age. I don't look at circumstances. I don't look at situations. I look to your word tonight. And God, your word said healing. God, I bless my sister to give her hope and to give her courage. Whew. God, until her appointed time, she'll get up again and walk. God, she'll do it again by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Raise your hands and love him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe God with you right now. I, 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 man, I feel the anointing of God. I want you, if you're having stomach troubles, I want you to lay your hands on your stomach. If it's your mind, your eyes, everywhere your affliction's at. Father, right now, call let this anointing go forth. God, let us to believe your word to be absolute tonight. God, that we're going to the other side. God, I know the storm's been on, sickness, and we've got our eyes on all kinds of situations. But tonight, God, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost touch our eyes right now. God, touch our eyes. Touch our bodies. God, the stomach. Oh, God, that stomach, God, that seems to rob them of everything they try to enjoy. But tonight, let that anointing touch their bodies. In the name of Jesus. How many can just raise, slip your hand up and say, I'm going to the other side. Say it again. Say it again. Now, as I close, the Bible said immediately they were to the other side. Luke says it, I think it is. And there met them a man out of the tombs. After what them disciples seen, and they marveled. Go to the next verse, Daniel. This is so important to get to you. He said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no commitment, no, no trust, no faith? I told you to go to the other side. If I told you to go to the other side, there is nothing that can hinder you from going to that other side. Let me believe that with me. Let me believe that. That we're going to the other side. When Sister Brooke got pregnant with that baby, and she had a brain bleed. Was it brain bleed? tumor didn't know if you're going to be able to keep the baby or not I thank you, amen, am I right didn't know what was going to happen she got that baby right here tonight by the grace of God she had it Thursday morning or Thursday evening sometime or another God's still good now we've seen the problem but let's look at some of the things that God's doing in this place tonight next verse Daniel I'm closing and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of a man is this? It's not his physical appearance. It ain't that he's a good, good captain. What kind of man is this that can speak to the winds and the sea? Obey him. That's a God you serve tonight. 
that they have to obey him. Brother, amen, tonight, there are some things that had to obey the will of God tonight. Raise your hands and say, thank you, God, for my healing tonight. The presence of God is in this place. God's done saved. God's done delivered. God's done moved in a mighty way. Would you slip your hands up one more time and thank him for moving the whole? I can preach and yell at you, but I want the hand of God just to sweep over your soul tonight that you can see that the wind is calm and the seas have become calm. Thank you tonight, God, that I'm going to the other side. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to the other side. A woman tried many positions, but she grew worse. So to Jesus, she came. And when they crowd, oh, they tried to restrain her. There's somebody here tonight that your marriage is not doing as good as it should be doing tonight. You're softly. You're just drifting. You're, you're, you're not really taking time for each other. You've been busy, you seem. But right now, God's touching your marriage. If you'll just let God touch you right now in it. God's touching your marriage. If you'll get anchored in this word tonight, it's going to be all right. Of the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, raise your hands and love him. I feel that old spirit of unbelief that don't want the, don't want this to happen to you, but the devil's a liar, and I refuse it by the power of God. Raise your hands and love him right now. Raise your hands and love him. A woman tried many positions. It's happening right now. Who worse? Sing it with me. Hallelujah. And when the crowd stand to your feet with me tonight, there's peace in this house. How many can receive God? There's peace with me tonight. These words through her pain. Touch Lord, touch her body tonight, Lord. Touch her inner spirit. Lord, in her mind, Lord, in every aspect of her life, in the name of Jesus. 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 knows that God's in this house tonight. Heaven knows the presence of God is touching lives in here tonight. Just tell your neighbor in a calm voice, we're going to the other side. We're going to the other side tonight. The journey is not over. We're going to the other side. How many really believe that tonight? We're going to the other side. Sister Rachel, this week, you're supposed to go to the doctor Tuesday everything else, but we're going to the other side. Sister Liz, we're going to the other side. Amen. How many believes that tonight? Give God one more shout of praise in this house. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Come on, 